Thanks. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction. Um, and uh, indeed, we uh, live and breathe and all that about WordPress at our company uh, in New Mexico. Uh, what I want to talk to you guys a little bit about today is uh, Gutenberg. And uh, what sort of my opinion and my read is on how it's going to change the WordPress ecosystem uh, and make it better uh, eventually, but eventually. Uh, I also put I assure you, and if you've ever watched uh, the movie Clerks, you may recognize that. Um, but I'm being serious. <laughs> um, and so uh, something I try and make sure to do to accommodate people that aren't um, especially super excited about asking questions uh, right uh, in public and, uh, you know, the sort of panic that comes with that is uh, feel free to uh, text me uh, questions during the presentation, um, and I'll do my best to answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, so just a little bit about me. I'm CEO at 11 Online. Um, we build software, we offer digital marketing services, um, and, uh, and build websites. Uh, recently, in the last year, we started something called Block Party. Uh, it's a Gutenberg block uh, collection, a lot of data visualization blocks. Um, I've been working with WordPress only since 2015, um, so I'm a newbie compared to a lot of you guys. Um, I uh, did some time as a, a, a really, really poor developer, um, software developer, um, and like I, like I said, uh, thankfully, I, that's not uh, something I do very much these days, and it's probably good for everyone. Um, that said, uh, you know, we're, there are actually 11 of us right now at 11 Online, uh, complete coincidence. And um, uh, I think seven of us are software developers, so we're definitely a software development heavy shop. Uh, so how many of you guys have played around with Gutenberg, know what it is, have any sense? Wow, not many of you. <laughs> okay, you got it on your schedule, good, cool. Um, okay, great, well, just to give a brief overview, uh, I don't wanna kind of talk too much about uh, probably what the other talk's about, um, but just to kind of give you a brief overview, it's going to be the new WordPress editor um, as of I don't know, maybe, the, maybe August, maybe September, who knows? Who could say? Um, you know, and, and what, what it's really gonna bring to WordPress is a, a true what you see is what you get experience, admin and front end. Um, the paradigm for creating content is blocks. Um, so currently there are people that build, and agencies that build websites, um, and they use you know, page builders that use kind of blocks of content or they may use something like advanced custom fields or CMB2, uh, we use CMB2 to create uh, custom, field, uh, custom fields for content. Uh, but uh, for the most part really it's, it's not really a what you see is what you get experience. So um, it's, it's kind of different from those in that way. Um, Gutenberg is going to ship with some simple blocks and uh, developers can build custom blocks. And uh, there has been a ton of controversy over the way it, it was conceived, the way it's developed. Um, I don't know what the rating is for Gutenberg as a plugin on the plugin repo. It's probably still pretty low. Uh, it was probably hovering at like two or three or something, I don't know. Um, but in any case, a um, lot of controversy in the community about Gutenberg and sort of the impending change. All right, now I'm going to try and do a demo. Uh, th this is what happens when I do demos, um, metaphorically. Um, but I'll give it a try. Um, so I wanted to uh, just give you a kind of a, as quick as possible sort of glance at uh, the Gutenberg uh, editor. If you uh, install Gutenberg on a, on, a, on a WordPress site, 
Um, and uh, you, let's say you go over to the menu where it says Gutenberg. Here, let me, uh, yeah, that, that's a little bit better. Uh, and you see there, there's a sub-menu item that says demo. Uh, you'll be able to find this po demo post. And it kind of shows off uh, sort of the basics of, of Gutenberg. So uh, this is your title area. It's where you can edit your permalinks. Uh, you have a sidebar that has a lot of the same kind of uh, things that you could edit in the old editor. Uh, but then this is where we get into blocks. Uh, so this is a cover image block. Uh, it's a block that, that comes default with Gutenberg. Um, you can edit um, printing expresses. Uh, you can edit right in the block, right? Um, you can edit the uh, image itself. Uh, you can transform the block. You can uh, make it widescreen, full width. Um, I don't know, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of fun. There, uh, yeah, there's a video block here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep scrolling just to show you. This is a paragraph block, uh, another paragraph block. You can uh, align it in different ways. You have access to all the kind of, uh, you know, text editing that you want. This is a heading block, right? Um, H2s, H3s, etc. Um, here's an image block. Uh, you can um, edit the caption, and uh, again, you can set the alignments. You can make it wide if your theme supports it. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, and then, you know, you have access to all the kind of typical stuff in your old editor, your unordered lists, your ordered lists, et cetera. Um, this is a quote block, all right? So if you want to insert a quote. Um, and, you know, just by the way, how do you do it? Um, Hit this plus, plus right here, and then you have access to uh, all the blocks, right? Uh, so you can put a divider, you can put a gallery, et cetera. Oh. There's your live demo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did the power go down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They got a thunderstorm in Tennessee. I did, I did. Well, hey, this is a. Uh, okay, so I guess we got to wait for that to turn back on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, I can I can improvise. This is fine. Right, so tell us about that. So all of the blocks that you had up there just then, mm -hmm. were those ones that come standard? No, there was a couple. There were, no. Uh, so the ones that were shown in the post there, uh, they all come default with Gutenberg. But if you saw, there were a couple that. Um, when you in the select um, uh, in the select block section, there were a couple that said BP, whatever block. Those are custom blocks that we've built, uh, which I was going to show afterwards. So th this is eventually going to come back on, right? Or maybe someone needs to turn it off. So that's a good question. Let me go see. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Can you save what you what you change as a new thing? Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. The, no, it's all good. Cool. Uh, sorry, your question? So, so once you modify that and you change that um, new look as a new theme? I'm not sure I'm following exactly. Okay, let, let's say you edit that. Can you save those settings as another plugin or another theme? So, oh, if you're, you're saying can you edit? So you can reuse blocks, yes. Okay. You can reuse blocks. Um, you can duplicate blocks. Uh, you can save a, a block with certain content or certain styling, and and save it and then reuse it later. Yeah, that's that's one of the uh, that's one of the default features. All right. Do I have to unplug and plug in? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I just did that. No, it's all good. Nathan, that is so cool. He's not even sweating. Not yet. I have to maybe unplug there, too. So it's not. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if I have to unplug it.
Yeah. Sorry, uh, let's keep improvising. Um, any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, in the interest of time and while this is going on, um, um, what I was going to show you was the default, the default blocks, right? I think you saw most of those. There's a video block. And again, what I would encourage you guys to do is uh, spin up a WordPress site, install Gutenberg, just start playing around. Um, the other item I was going to show you, uh, once we can get that going, uh, is some custom blocks that we built, uh, my company built, um, probably in February and March, uh, just trying to kind of play around with Gutenberg and see what we could actually do. And so one of the ideas that I had was, um, uh, who here likes sports? Sports? Anyone? <laughs> um, so I read a lot of sports blogs. And uh, um, I read a lot of blogs that have a lot of like tables and charts and uh, all kinds of weird baseball statistics and statistical analysis. Uh, because I don't know. I guess I don't have a lot of, I don't know. Highbrow interests, I guess, but uh, but yeah. So anyway, so I, I I enjoy those, and so one of the things I thought about was, I'm you know most of the time you see those kinds of charts and, and stuff like that, they're um, images, uh, just sort of static images, right? And so I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you could use Gutenberg to build out some of this data visualization as a block, right? So make your own pie chart, make your own bar chart, make your own line chart. Um, so Whenever we can get this going, I don't know. Is it, you think it's any closer? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I just, yeah. I know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is. <laughs> Darn Gutenberg. Breaking everything. It's still in beta. So if you make blocks to, to import your stats and stuff, are you saying that would be like dynamic? Really? <coughs> okay. All right. That's fine. I'll restart. I'll re yeah, I'm, I'm restarting. So we'll see what happens. All right, so forget the demo. Maybe if we get back to it, I'll, I'll see what I can do about that. Uh, I don't need the slides. And um, I'm happy. I'll put the slides up on, uh, on Twitter. And you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, they're not super uh, descriptive and all that, all that much anyway. So what I was going to show you were these data visualization blocks and other blocks that we built to sort of demonstrate what the potential is. Because I think with Gutenberg, a lot of people, I'm not sure that they're seeing right now the potential because it's so novel and so new. Um, and, and just right now, and, and f the fact is that for right now, most people, uh, Gutenberg's just a new editor. You have to do blocks. And it's just a little bit of a different way of thinking about things. But what I love about Gutenberg is uh, the potential to create richer content with custom blocks that you could install on your site or uh, through plugins. And, um, and, and so you know, really what you see is what, when you're using Gutenberg and when you're building custom blocks, the potential for the editing experience could, is it's, it's akin to almost like a Squarespace or a Wix type of experience or a Medium type of experience where uh, you just have access to much richer tools to create richer content. Um, and, um, and so, you know, kind of looking at that uh, from that standpoint, um, hold on.
Yeah, looking at it from that standpoint, I think what's, what's useful um, What's useful to think about, so how many of you guys know about the controversy? The Gutenberg controversy. I don't know if you guys follow or, or care much. There's a lot of controversy about, um, you know, a lot of people asking, okay, well, I maintain a bunch of old sites. How's that going to um, affect sites I maintain? Because Gutenberg's going to be the default editor in 5.0. Uh, at this stage, there are a number of interventions that you can take to basically punt the, you know, the problem a little bit farther down the road. Uh, there are plugins that let you keep the classic editor um, default after 5.0. And so um, do your research, but uh, I don't, you know, at the end of the day, I, don't, I think there are measures that you can take um, if you want to punt it down the road. But, who cares about punting it down the road, right? Because this is the business track, and uh, we have a bunch of entrepreneurs here, right? And so, um, you know, I've been in WordPress since 2015, not very long, but um, WordPress allowed me to create a business, right? So I take that pretty seriously. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, it allowed me to get out of my uh, crappy job at a nonprofit that was sucking my soul. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys have a similar experience, right? Um, so, so when uh, I, I heard about Gutenberg, I started researching, thinking about it. Um, the, my perception was this is the biggest disruption to the WordPress ecosystem in a very long time. Certainly since I've been working in WordPress and possibly since maybe custom post types or um, the customizer, this disruption is, uh, it is going to change WordPress um, in a very, very real way going forward. And uh, so, you know, as, uh, as entrepreneurs, right, uh, as an entrepreneur for me, um, I see this, this disruption as a, an incredible opportunity. This is an incredible opportunity. That's what I was thinking, not to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. I mean, as entrepreneurs, I mean, you can, it's all about attitude anyway. If we didn't want change or wanted the status quo, we'd stay in the 9 to 5 or 12 to 12 or whatever it may be. But as, as I think you were just about to say, with chaos from an entrepreneurial standpoint, with chaos comes innovation. I mean, so we can seize this, as you said, as an opportunity to separate ourselves from people who are still doing what they did last week. Yeah, yes. Yeah, no, very succinctly put, uh, I, would, I would say this. It's not that I don't have empathy for people that create a business with a certain business model, <laughs> and it's going, and then something comes and disrupts it. Um, and they have a hard time anticipating it, and then um, they have to pivot. And I, I, It's not that I don't have empathy for that. Um, and, you know, when we first started building WordPress sites, we were building pretty simple brochure sites. Right, and um, you know, we kind of moved in a different direction, but then also we saw that th that market was starting to get eaten away by, you know, Squarespace, Wix, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that wasn't really even a market anymore. We had to move it anyway. But uh, definitely, there were a lot of uh, small shops and, and people like that I know that have been sort of, you know, cut down. But in any case. Um, it's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Uh, and so what I want to talk about was, you know, how, how, is, uh, how is this going to change the ecosystem as I see it? Uh, I think a big question everyone asks is, how is it going to affect page builders? Right? Uh, how many of you guys use page builders to build uh, WordPress sites? OK, cool. Uh, how many, what, just shout out some names of page, yeah, Beaver Builder. Elementor, Divi, anyone still use a Visual Composer? I'm still so new, I'm just going with themes. Okay. Um, uh, uh, there's another one that I've seen. I don't know, there's a million. Anyway, point is, uh, so a lot of people uh, say, oh, the page builder is dead. Well, I can tell you this, that when Goodberg comes out, uh, it is not a product that is going to be robust enough to compete with modern page builders like Beaver Builder right away. So 
whoever says that, uh, in my opinion, I'm not saying it won't. It might not. It might eventually happen. It's just that at this stage, um, Gutenberg, you can add blocks. There's going to be some good blocks that come default, but um, you can build columns and things like that. But it's not on the level of uh, Beaver Builder. It's just it, from a functionality standpoint, it's not going to make you ditch all those page builders and, and go with Gutenberg. Maybe later, maybe in a year, maybe in a few years, uh, it's going to mature as a product within WordPress enough um, that it will allow certain, certain users to be able to kind of transition away. Um, so my shop, we don't use page builders. Um, like I said, we use CMB2 and we use other things. And part of the reason we don't use page builders, and that's not, I know there's Bold Grid's a sponsor, so I'm not trying to, you know, uh, make waves. But we, we don't like, we don't love page builders because we feel that um, page builders can add a lot of cruft and make the make sites harder to scale. I don't want to get into arguments about that necessarily, but that's just the, that's kind of our opinion. But the thing about page builders that I know is true, page builders exist for a reason. They exist because end users demanded them. Because the editor experience was subpar, right? And so it is foolish as an entrepreneur to ignore that. Um, it's, it's foolish to ignore that. And so what, I'm, what really excites me about, about Gutenberg is that this is a, a, a really sort of forward-thinking product, and it's going to be part of WordPress core. You're not going to need to install another plugin. Um, the way it stores post content and the way it stores the blocks themselves is kind of, I was a little bit frightened at first, but it's kind of ingenious now that I've sort of come to, come to terms with it. HTML con comments, kind of, kind of really interesting. But um, it's, a, it's a, I don't think the page builder is dead anytime soon. Um, and there are lots of page, I know people that work for companies that make page builders and they're thinking about ways to use Gutenberg uh, in their, in their uh, products. So this isn't a page builder versus not, uh, forget, forget all that noise. Um, this is just a, a change in the market. There are going to be players and they're going to adapt and they're not going to adapt. Now, um, how many of you guys run small shops, boutique shops that sell WordPress sites to clients? That's probably a lot of you, I would guess. Um, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you guys. What do you think the opportunities are for you guys with Gutenberg? Anyone have any thoughts, ideas? Training, redesign, complete rework, many opportunities. Meetup, fodder. Yeah. So tra training for sure, um, because it's definitely a different a different paradigm. And so if you have a, a site that you help a client manage, and they want to start using Gutenberg. Um, you're, you know, there's going to be training opportunities for sure. Yeah. For us, we're looking to see what the community can do as far as creating unique and clever content blocks that may be available for download or for, for small fees that we can be more innovative in design and features and services. Yeah. So, so we, so my my uh, my company just sold our first Gutenberg site. Site powered by Gutenberg. Uh, it's a brochure site. Uh, we decided that we were going to complicate life for ourselves. And not only did we sell a Gutenberg site, we, also, we sold a Gutenberg Accelerated Mo Mobile Pages native site. Right? So it's AMP native and it's Gutenberg. So I um, have to admit that we went in the process of selling it, we, we needed to actually see if that was doable. <laughs> Um, so once we kind of knew that it was doable, uh, we sort of then proceeded. But so we're, we're actually in the process of building that right now, and it's completely changed our workflow. Yeah. Uh, yes, sorry. How so? How so? Um, well, we had a certain way of building custom themes, um, and that way is kind of out the door. Right, so we had a way of building custom themes with CMB2. Um, which is similar to ACF. I don't know if you guys use ACF or are familiar. Um, 
where uh, we made templates and you know templates had content block areas basically and so uh, with this brochure site we're making templates but we're making templates of blocks Gutenberg blocks that are reusable and branded um, so we're really it's just it's been the, the occasion for us to kind of completely revise and change our workflow and we're still figuring it out um, you know this was one of those this was one of those where part of the part of the project's success is um, like R and D, right? Um, because we we want to uh, be a shop that can when 5.0 comes out, and, and we, yeah we want we, yeah we want that. And so that brings me actually to probably the towards the end of the presentation. This is this is pretty cool, right? Blue. <laughs> Blue. Um, so, so towards the end of the presentation, I was going to talk about, okay, well, all right, you might have a question for me. Why am I here? Like, it's, it's Birmingham, Alabama. I'm from New Mexico. What am I doing here? Why did I apply to talk here? And uh, yeah, you know, my company built a product and whatever. And if you guys want to ask me about that, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that later. But the reason really I'm here is it's too hot in New Mexico. <laughs> it's not that. It's, 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 it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't mind. I, I lived out on the East Coast for a long time. So, so uh, this, this like 85, 90 with humidity, you know, it's, it's, I'd say it's even. But no, the reason I'm here is that, um, so I grew up in West Virginia. So I'm Peruvian originally. I lived up and down the East Coast growing up. I, I actually went to junior high and high school in West Virginia. Um, and then went to college in Philly, outside, outside of Philly, lived in Philly for a long time, but then moved to New Mexico. Was, my wife got a job in New Mexico. Um, and so I spent time in some pretty underdog uh, states in this, in this country, right? Um, Specifically, West Virginia and New Mexico. Uh, I, you know, and, and you know, just the sad fact, and this is no, no, nothing to joke about, the sad fact is that, you know, when you see a lot of those, like, top 50 state lists, right, um, West Virginia, New Mexico, sometimes Alabama, they kind of tend to be at the bottom. We're used to it. I'm sorry? We're used to it. Right. Um, so, uh, one of the things I talk about in my presentation is that I'm a Met fan. Uh, I, I, I like baseball, and I, I'm a Met fan. I don't know if you guys follow baseball right now, but Mets are probably one of the five worst teams in baseball right now. Um, we had a couple of nice years a couple of years ago, but um, you know, uh, if you spend time in New York, um, you know, and, and uh, you root for the underdog, you're going to be a Met fan. You're not going to be a Yankees fan. You know. Um, so, so I'm a big root for the underdog guy, and um, you know, myself and my partners, we were able to build a business in New Mexico, uh, uh, which, frankly, is you know, New Mexico is a desert in more than ways than one. Uh, I love New Mexico; it's a beautiful place, awesome people, amazing, you know, scenery, and but uh, you know, it's just not a lot of money in New Mexico, and um, so I'm very proud of the fact we were able to build a a real business with clients all over the country in New Mexico. Um, I see Gutenberg as an opportunity for <laughs> agencies and businesses that aspire to be more than just a local provider. And some of you guys are going to be content being local providers and there is nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You're going to have boutique business and it's going to be small but you're going to know all of your clients really well and you're going to serve them really well and that is cool. My DNA, it, it just it doesn't work that way. Um, I'm always pushing, I'm always constantly trying to look for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and, and maybe that'll change if I get, as I get older but I see Gutenberg as a, as, a, as a disrupting element in this ecosystem and I see it as a way for my company to go take the next level and position ourselves in, a, in such a way that we're at sort of cutting edge. We're building WordPress sites the Gutenberg way. 
we have Gutenberg products, we're building custom blocks with high functionality, we're not just building paragraph blocks, we're building data visualization blocks, we're building um, complex user interaction blocks, high functionality blocks that interact with third party APIs, et cetera, right? Uh, and we're building them because for the user, right? And so I'm here in Alabama because you guys, there's an opportunity here, I'm telling you right now. And it, it could be as simple opportunities like training. I think that's awesome. It could be other opportunities like consulting uh, with other firms or, you know, it could be, it could be building products. It could be uh, revising your workflow to accommodate and white label to other businesses or other agencies. I mean, I'll give you guys one, right? I'm waiting for someone, and by waiting I mean figuring out if we have the time somehow to do it ourselves, but who's going to build the site builder for a niche industry that's powered by Gutenberg? Because there are a lot of niche industry site builders out there, right, that are powered by WordPress. But, they're, you know, they're powered by sort of the WordPress experience, right? So. So who's going to do the one that's powered by Gutenberg and it's going to give users a, a much better, much easier experience like building their sites? It could be yeah. that. It could be. It, so, you know, that's just one thought. That's just one thought I've had recently. Um, is these are tremendous opportunities for entrepreneurs. And um, the underdogs that are here in this room, they're in New Mexico, they're in West Virginia, all over the country, uh, when there's disruption, there are going to be people at the top that are going to stay static and comfortable, right? And eventually that's going to affect their bottom line and, and they're going to start fading away and there's going to be people at the bottom that are going to see that opportunity, that are going to go and take that, those extra measures, extra steps and push and grow their companies and, and get a little bit of that market share. And so, so that's my evangelization to you guys is this is a tremendous opportunity. I, I don't have the answer. I have some ideas, I have some thoughts, but um, this is a tremendous opportunity. And, and lastly, the last thing I want to say is this. Who is WordPress for? I think our keynote speaker talked a lot about it, right? Who's WordPress for? It is not for developers. Sorry guys, I love you guys. I love the developers. I had a short, terrible stint as one, but I, I and I, I, I love the designers. I love the you know the business people, the entrepreneurs, the marketers. But WordPress is the people's platform. It is for the users. And the only thing I can say is that using WordPress for the last three years, and then using Gutenberg, uh, just there's a gulf in terms of what it's like to create content, especially if you have some custom blocks doing some really cool things. So, um, so with that said, you know, go, go for it. Go after that opportunity if that's something that interests you and um, that's pretty much it. I, I have time for questions, like probably what, like 10 minutes for questions? No, you got more than 10. This was the notification. Oh, okay. All right. Continue. Sorry about the technical difficulties <laughs> uh, and um, and yeah, shoot. Thank you. Yes. Right. Uh, first of all, disclaimer, my experience with WordPress is a lot closer to weeks than years, as many of you. So uh, if you're just thinking out loud, we're just having a conversation. I'm new to WordPress, newer obviously to Gutenberg. So I've got a simple two-page site, and let's just say, for example, I have a, a WooCommerce on the second page, and there's a grid of 20 products there. Uh, thumbnail is actually a video template. Just thinking out loud, what difference will, or what will be the benefits to me of using Gutenberg in this application? Well, okay, so um, I know that WooCommerce, so WooCommerce was acquired by Automatic. Um, Automatic has engineers working on WordPress core and they have engineers working on Gutenberg um, full time. Um, and um, so I know that they're working on making WooCommerce 
uh, Gutenberg friendly, right? So, uh, so imagine, right, having Gutenberg blocks available to you when you're building pages that have a product grid, right? And so, um, and having kind of all these different pieces of WooCommerce as blocks that you could put on any page or any post. So it's going to give the people building sites more flexibility, the people using sites more flexibility, right? Um, imagine um, you have a client and they want to put a blog post and they want to feature a product, right? So if, if you have WooCommerce and WooCommerce has uh, Gutenberg blocks that allow them to just drag and drop and put in a product or a grid of products, it's going to make their lives a lot easier. It's going to help you deliver more value to them. Right? So what's the process now for that to happen? Um, we're going to go to the home page and then click on the link to go to the store page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not an ideal experience right now. And so that's just one, that's just one way that that experience can change for the end user, but also for the professional. Um, I think it's going to, you know, the paradigm is going to be blocks, and so it's, it's you know, it's, it's going to be about building, developers are going to be oriented towards building branded, reusable blocks, um, high functionality blocks, and organizing their sites in that way. Yes? Yes, sorry. I, I think as, as agency owners, and I think you hit on it pretty well, or even developers, we either have to create the wave, ride the wave, <laughs> yeah. And, and whether we create it or write it, it's just going to give our customers that much more options to beat that crap out of the competition. Well, yeah. It just it I can I can see it very clearly. And there's even I think um, I can't remember if it was Ten Up or one of those big agencies did a usability study on Gutenberg as, as like as it stood at you know maybe a month or two ago. Um, and it's certainly not perfect, and it's far from mature. Uh, but you know, you know, even just uh, uh, you know, my own experience of building content with WordPress, there's just no comparison. And so, putting yourself in a position to deliver that kind of value to clients, um, it has to create a competitive advantage. And I'm sure, as entrepreneurs, we can figure out how that means you know, how that means that we can elevate our positions as entrepreneurs taking advantage of that. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Yes? So I'm kind of on the other side. I'm a blogger. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this techie stuff mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Um, I try to learn as much as I can because it can be useful. How do you foresee it affecting, I guess, the smaller users, some of the smaller bloggers who may want some customized features or do you anticipate companies selling it block by block or yeah. great. you know that, that don't come in the default program. yeah awesome great question um, it remains to be seen what I will say is that uh, there are a number of efforts now in terms of you buy a plugin you install the plugin and all of a sudden you have these additional oh, right. these okay. additional blocks right so, so maybe the way it plays out is that it's a it's a pay membership, right? Uh, maybe it's you pay something every year, and then you get these awesome blocks that make your experience so much better, and you know make your blogging and the content you create so much richer, right? Maybe it's that, or maybe it's uh, some sort of freemium model, or maybe um, let me think here. I, you know, maybe it's a you know maybe it's more. Maybe the, the default experience becomes a little bit better, and so then maybe it's specialized by industry or niche, right? So maybe you're, um, like I said, you're a sports blogger. Well, then you might need X kind of blocks to make your content writing experience a lot better. So maybe that's how it plays out. Uh, uh, you know, there's, that's the beauty of this. It's, it's so new. Uh, there is a there's a lot of there's a lot to be uh, sort of decided and a lot to be found out and so you know again like I said the entrepreneurs they have the they have the uh, the chance to sort of mine that that new you know that new territory and and see what happens now that's exciting to me 
you know? It's, it's really exciting. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I know that part of the development of Gutenberg has taken accessibility concerns to heart. Are the default blocks completely 100% accessible, ADA compliant? I don't believe so. Um, but again, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, where's the opportunity there? ADA compliant uh, blocks that uh, can be used on sites that need to remain ADA compliant. There's some variables there. ADA compliance is a really complicated thing, and so there's some variables there that you may not be able to control. But um, imagine that, hey, my blocks are all ADA compliant, right? Um, I think that could be a tremendous that could be a tremendous uh, business opportunity. Um, so so yeah, I mean for, you know if you have a site that needs to be ADA compliant, you're probably better off hiring a developer to build blocks or build you know build the theme or build blocks, and that are contracted to be ADA compliant. Uh, and you'll you'll need to do a custom, but maybe there's at some point a product type solution um, that will let you you know be able to take advantage of that. Um, we are building AMP blocks. We are building accelerated mobile pages blocks, right? So all the elements of the blocks are accelerated mobile pages native. Um, we're building it for a project, but tr believe you me, we're going to be reusing that on other stuff, and um, so there's. But there's potentially an opportunity there, too. Anyone else? Yes? Um, with the block system, do you think that that's going to end up maybe replacing the plugin system or the like, widgets in the code box? And how is the, is the code going to be cleaner for a faster, easier, searchable? Yeah, that's okay. good question. So I, it's not going to replace plugins, per se, because plugins are kind of the, the way that at least the vehicle right now for getting more blocks into your um, ex editing experience. You can also set them up through the theme. I think the, from, a technical, from the technical side, theme development, it's going to have to change. Um, and so, you know, again, there's lots of different people that build themes in different ways. There's so many different methods, but with Gutenberg, uh, you know, what we did is we have a header and we have a footer. <laughs> and everything else are templates of blocks. Um, and so, so it's a it's a different paradigm for sure. I, I don't. When you're talking about widget areas, that's another interesting thing. I don't know, because widget areas used to be, you know, places where people could edit content, and you would hook them into a certain area, and it was an area maybe that was repeated uh, or not. Um, you know, a lot of times in the early days, we built sites where the home pages, uh, the content was was you know dictated. Uh, by widget areas, right? So users would edit the widget areas and then it would edit the content on the home page. So we're not doing that anymore, right? Um, we pretty much abandoned widget areas. So how that's going to change, I don't know 100% yet. Anyone else? Yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the first accelerated mobile pages native site we're ever, we've ever done. And it's also the first Gutenberg, I, I told you, we like to make our lives complicated, so. Um, it's also the first Gutenberg site we've built for a client. Um, so I'll let you know. But the idea is, uh, you know, obviously under three seconds or obviously close to instant. That's the whole idea, right? Anyone else? All right, again, apologize for the technical difficulties. Thank you, guys.
So what, what happened? Well, we had...